Get your hands on a Subway Steak Melt. Try the irresistible Big Philly Cheesesteak or tender juicy steak and cheese. And don't miss out on the unforgettable steak, bacon, egg, and cheese for breakfast. Subway Steak Melts. Melty goodness made irresistibly delicious. Subway. Eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. You must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report. Taping this on a Monday afternoon from the BS Report studio. We had a little technical difficulties in Bristol, so if this sounds a little different, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you'll have to get used to it. On the Subway Fresh Tech Hotline, as always, coming off a dramatic uh, nail biter of a Cowboys win. Cousin Sal, how are yeah, you? Yeah, Bill. What's oh, going I'm on? feeling good, man. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to apologize for a win ever. You shouldn't. Uh, I feel like we, we're owed about ten of those if you watch the Cowboys over the last uh, dozen years or so, or even three years. Can you at least apologize for not covering? <laughs> I told you last week. I said this is going to be a tough game. I said Grossman is going to be driving for the win or tie, and uh, it will be a nail biter. And Sure enough, it was. But. Yeah, I uh, I made the classic mistake of of just looking at the two obvious trap games and ignoring them, and and one of them was the Cowboys, the other was the Giants game. The, you know, you watch the Giants Eagles game, and it really did seem like the Eagles had a better team, right? Like, like just take motivation aside, like it seemed like they were more talented. Am I crazy? Yeah, and not only that, for the first time, their free agents like really showed, you know, like. Namdi was shut lights out, and yeah. Steve Smith caught a touchdown, and Babin, you know, of course, there's a fumble at the end. Like, this might be what they need. I don't care who's playing quarterback. This could be what they need to get a little on a little roll here. Well, I'd like to apologize to America because, uh, as not the creator of the Ewing theory, but the one who's espoused it, Dave Cirilli is the creator. Oh. Um, as the one who's espoused its benefits over the last 10 years to a wider and wider audience. Yeah. Totally missed the Michael Vick Ewing theory. Yeah. Because. He's not that good. Like he's a 500 quarterback. He wasn't playing well this year. He was terrible the week before. And you know, I was terrified to take the Eagles because of Vince Young. Because I don't think Vince Young is good. But I think the one thing that happened was the Eagles, because Vince Young isn't good, they kind of went back to ball control, moving in, play action, Lashawn McCoy. Yeah. And it just felt different watching them. I didn't feel like they were that erratic. And that, that they might be dangerous if they just stay with that game plan. Little dump offs to Selleck and yeah. you know, like little screens and yeah, I guess he still had three interceptions, but he that's was terrible. That's a Michael Vick game anyway. But yeah, in his second half he uh he looked good. He he drove them down the field a few times. He had three interceptions and I didn't feel like he played that well. But I felt like they had more of an identity. They were like more of this ball control, kind of grind the clock out. Let's let our defense, you know, win most of this game for us and we'll do. I don't know. They just felt different watching them. And, yeah, Vince wasn't terrible. I mean, he made some picks, but he hasn't played the year. I thought he was great in that final drive. He made some big plays. So let me ask you, Vince, if uh, Michael Vick says, you know what, um, I'm not going to be a big sissy like I've been uh, all my life. I'm going to put on that Kevlar jacket. I'm going to take a page out of the great Tony Romo's book. And uh, yeah. I want to play. What do you say? You say no thanks? Yeah, I wouldn't play him until he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. The, uh, you know, and that was a classic. It was a classic on both ends. It was a classic Andy Reid. Every time you think you're, I'm counting me out and I'm going to get fired, um, we're going to just win out of nowhere. And then it was the classic Giants home game, which we talked about on the podcast last week. It had all the makings. Yep. Giants are good. Oh, they're world this week. Blah, blah, blah. NFC East. And and, uh, and they scored 10 points. Yeah. And they, they can't run the ball. I think they said, like, the Giants have two rushes for more than 20 yards this year. And they're both from Bradshaw. And he's uh, he's out, of course. And that's, every game is going to be uh, a mystery at the end for them. Well, the one thing we can, I think, all agree on is that Brandon J- Jacobs is completely washed up. Yeah. There's just nothing left. And he, I started him in our fantasy league, and he's probably going to cost me this week because he was just atrocious, and he doesn't move the pile anymore. And Forget about running downhill. It looks like he's running uphill. Mm-hmm. And this is supposed to be when he gets good, when it's cold and everything. Yeah, but. especially like against that Eagles line that was, 
you know, you would, obviously they're pretty good against the run. You would think he would be able to move the line back. But um, what else jumped out at you last yesterday other than Jack Del Rio screwing up uh, my Jags cover and win? <laughs> you hate that. Uh, I think we have to stay away from bad teams in general. Like, just, I don't, I don't know, you made that like your contest pick? Jackson, yeah, look, look, you get your first down, you're on the two-yard <laughs> line with 43 seconds left, and you waste 28 seconds so you can run the ball right into the line again, and all of a sudden now you're panicking. Like, it was just a disaster. Use your timeout, Jack. Yeah. Just call the timeout with 43 seconds left, and you now you have a lot of time. But, uh, yeah, I've, I, that pick didn't work out for me, and, and Dallas obviously up seven. Where you think like, all right, well, this here's where Rex throws the pick, and you run the clock out. At least I get a push. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what was the other one? Uh, Miami, I hit. That was nice. I, I actually had Buffalo. Oh, there, but, yeah. Mi- Minnesota, which yeah. I th- still think Minnesota wins if Peterson doesn't get hurt. That was one of those. He's he's getting carted off, and they're like, oh, we don't even have to watch this game anymore. Yeah. They're not going to win with Toby Gerhardt and a rookie QB. But. And and now he's out for a while, right? Is yeah. Four to six weeks. So for a while, I mean, the big the big injury we're gonna have to talk about. Uh, a day after, I bet the Bears ten to one to win the <laughs> NFC. Jay Cutler looks like he's out for the season, but might be able to come back for the playoffs. I still think, you know, I think they can go three and three the next six. Their schedule's not that hard. They have the AFC West uh, yeah. coming up. Tebow's in there. Yeah. They have San Diego, which you know that's you. Oh no, they already played San Diego with the. Uh, Kansas City, I think they have Tyler yeah. Palco. Yeah, they have the rest. The next three games are against the AFC West. So, yeah, they, I mean they could do it. They play tough defense and they run the ball. And maybe if uh, Caleb Haney, we, we fell in love with in the playoffs, if he could keep the tur- turnovers to a minimum, they could they could be something. He wasn't terrible. No, yeah. I didn't think he. Would, it's not like uh, there's worse QBs you could put out there. Well, now they're talking like they must. Sign, I don't know. Who I was listening to yesterday. Mark Bolger is available. That's the guy you want in there. Oh, has it come to that? I mean, I guess if it's between him Oof. and Brett Favre, but please, please, God, let it be Mark Bulger. But, but uh, what was Mark, Mark Bulger doing for the last eleven weeks? I haven't heard his name in eighteen months. I don't he wasn't it. good two years ago. Yeah, that's like the Kerry Collins thing. It's like, oh, they signed Kerry Collins. Oh, well, well, so what? Where does that? Where does that take you? Mm. Uh, I am not counting out the Bears. I think ten wins will get uh, both of those wild cards, and it'll just come down to who beat who and whatever. And Chicago's beaten Detroit. I think, have they beaten them twice or just, oh, they split with Detroit? They split with them, I think, yeah. They beat Philly. Right. That's a bonus. Mm-hmm. They beat, Did they play Atlanta? They played, well, I can't remember now. If they no, I don't think they played Atlanta. No. But, you know, as long as they go 3-3, three and three, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, they could be okay. It could be okay. That that wild card's really shaping up. I tell you, when the Lions were down ten yesterday to Carolina, yeah, or even more, right? Was it twenty four seven? I don't know. Something like that. I said, I said, this team is done. Yeah, they're, they're not going to get to ten wins. They they don't play any defense and uh, they can't run the ball. And then Kevin Smith, out of nowhere, wh- where was this guy? Unbelievable. First of all, he looks like he's one hundred and fifty eight pounds. Yeah, and he's running the ball forty yards a clip. I'm like, oh boy, they're back just like that. I was watching with some of the Grantland guys yesterday and. He broke some play, and he looked really good, and, and it said Smith on his jersey. Because we didn't have that game on one of the you know big TVs. And mm-hmm. It's like, is that? It's not Kevin Smith, right? That can't be Kevin Smith. Like, yeah. that, the guy, I thought he was off the team a year ago. Yeah, that's Robert Smith, the ex-Viking. Okay. What Smith is that? Big Smith argument, and then it turns out it's Kevin Smith. Yeah. And uh, I thought he looked really good. Maybe it does take 10 years to recover from ACL surgery. <laughs> that's what they say. He looked really good, though. It made a difference because they weren't getting a running game before. And, you know, well, let's go to the Thanksgiving games. Yeah. Because and let me, these are the best Thanksgiving oh. games that I ever remember. I mean, they've only had three for a while, a few years now. But how many how many divorces do you think come out of this Thanksgiving? It's going to be a lot. That, yeah. I hope a lot because I mean it's understandable. Is there going to be a judge that that grants uh, full custody to a wife because the guy watched these three games? He's a, he's a phenomenal. Which one do you have to skip? Well, the problem is usually that early game was the throwaway game because that was always right. You know, fill in the blank, thirty-eight, Detroit ten. Mm-hmm. And now this year, that's a must-watch game, and you could really make the case that uh, this is a nice time to catch the Packers right now. It could be. I Starks don't... is hurt. Three days rest. They have a pass rush. They can score. It seems like you can move the ball on this Packers team. And, uh, you know, I could see myself talking 
talk myself into the lions plus whatever. What Look, do you you're think? falling asleep already on trick the fact. I know. I was trying. I had a bur- salad burp, and I didn't want to burp on the air. I thought that would have been uh, inappropriate. That's uh, we we would welcome it. But the, you know, I think the Packers are a lot better, really a lot better than the Lions. I do in too. Almost every area, but maybe you're right. Maybe they do catch them off guard. What what do you think the line is? Detroit can score, and I think the fans will show up. Mm-hmm. And the fans are going to be great, and they're going to be so fired up to see the Lions potentially end that streak and whatever that, you know, you got to factor it in. I'm going to say uh, Detroit by five and a half. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Green Bay by five and a half. Uh, you're going to get this. All right. I said seven. I, I thought I think it's risky giving anyone less than seven uh, against Green Bay, but it's six. Yeah. So you're going to get it. You're a half point off. I just want to... I just want to say that I I did incorporate the Thanksgiving bump with my three picks for these lines. Which which goes? Which I way? think that I think Vegas bumps it toward the home team on Thanksgiving. Well, not Detroit traditionally, but you not just, Detroit traditionally in general. And I think this year because they're just competent enough to make a case that they might be decent. Well, this might be. I mean, on three days rest, these games are a coin flip anyway. When yeah. it comes down to that, so maybe they do upset them, but I I wouldn't take it. I don't know. I'd also I want to bet plus two hundred on Kevin Smith blowing up both of his ACLs again in this game. <laughs> both of them? <laughs> yeah, coming off three days rest. I don't think his ACLs are going to be ready. Wow! So he's going to blow one out and then play with that and then blow the other one. That's going to be play. simultaneous in the first play. It's oh, going to be great. a halfback uh, pitch and he's just going to fall down. <laughs> I'm going to use that as a prop. Yeah, you uh, should. The second game, Miami at Dallas. I think this is going to be the best of the three games, unfortunately. Oh, you don't want any part of this Miami team right now. No. It's like one of the only things I was right about last week. They're more consistent than us over the last Yeah, month. I, mean, I love Miami. Sperano's going to want to beat us. I don't like this game at all. That was the only game I bet straight up last weekend. I love this Miami team. I think they might get to 9-7 and seven if they win this game. You were all over them. And love them. The fact that Fitzpatrick doesn't refuses to throw uh, further than seven yeah. yards downfield is, uh, is a big plus for anyone playing them. Yeah. He's been exposed. Um, this is a nice spot for Dallas, though, because Miami's feeling good. Now you get the three days rest, go to Dallas, you get to play home. Uh, I had this one a little bit high. I had this as Dallas by seven points. Wow. I had it even higher. I had nine, and it's, it is seven, in fact. So you get oh. exactly right. Excellent. I think that's a fair line, and I think I could see yourself talking yourself into a two point six uh, six point two team tease. I sure will. And somebody's gonna blow up for you. I know. Oh, I, can will. I bet on this? Maybe I just do the two money lines on the two teams you bet you, against me. Yeah. Okay. But let me ask you, from someone who's not a fan of the team, is Rob Ryan getting harder and harder to look at? <laughs> I feel like we have Captain Lou Albano running our defense. I'm really waiting for him to put the rubber bands to his chin and sub in the wild Samoans in our nickel package. I can't take it anymore. The rubber bands would be great. He should just do that one week. <laughs> I love that idea. It is rough. It is rough. And for some reason, I don't, and maybe it's because he looks like a werewolf, but uh, they do show him an awful lot for a defensive coordinator. They really do. It's not like this guy has been like the puppet master the last 20 years, just pulling strings and winning Super Bowls. Yeah. And he's a random defensive coordinator who's had a pretty average career. If he cut his hair and lost three or 400 pounds, they'd never show him. You right. should, it's too bad uh, your Jimmy show doesn't do more football because you could have Ralphie May like put a beard on him and he could be the long lost Ryan defensive coordinator. Oh, brother. that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna so, pitch it anyway. Pitch that out. It'll be good. Happens. It'll be good. And now San Francisco at Baltimore, the night game. Oh, you know, man, I, I, I would have said three normally, but I think the short. The short week and the West Coast, East Coast, I think it's three and a half by Baltimore, and I like uh, San Fran. All right. I said three and a half, uh, as you did, and uh, so we're going to tie on this. It was five. It went down to three. Whoa. And, yeah, I thought short week going uh, West to East was, was going to be the difference there. but I don't think anyone has sold on this Baltimore team at this point. Who did you say you like? I, I like San Fran. I think San Fran's good, and I think Baltimore's going to have a lot of trouble scoring. Yeah. And the only way that, uh, you know, the the Thursday night, that's a tough one. Playing a night game, like four four days after you already played. But uh, I think San Fran's better. Uh, they might be better. And I'm not betting this game. There's no way I'll win. I've bet against the Niners all year. I've bet Baltimore all year, and it hasn't worked out well for me. San Fran, big winner with the Chicago, with the Cutler thing, by the way. 
Why so? What do you mean? They're, I think it's Green Bay and San Fran. Oh. And then there's a huge drop off now to the next group of teams in oh. the NFC. Oh, I do. Right. Wow. You got Dallas, you get the Giants, you got Atlanta, New Orleans. They're all the same team. They could win or lose any game. I think Chicago was the one team that easily could have been the top wild card and won all three road games and gotten in the Super Bowl, and now that's out the window. They are tough, San Francisco, and they only played Arizona yesterday, but they're the kind of team that you you look up and you're down you know, you're down ten nothing, thirteen nothing. Your field goal kicker can miss three field goals, and you're still like well in charge of the game. Yeah, Acres was bound to determine not to let them cover that spread, and they yeah. still did it. They Acres, did. Acres went into that going. You know what? People, people think this is uh, the right amount of points, and I have something coming for them. Now, what would be better than uh, topping off the uh, topping off the Thanksgiving festivities with the Harbaugh brothers fight uh, while shaking hands after the game? <laughs> I would pay. Well, I'd give twelve ninety nine pay per view. I love people are so desperate to to all those camera like fifty cameramen come in so they can capture the yeah. uh, emotional <laughs> hug. And by the way, they just hugged three hours ago. I know. <laughs> it's not like it's like oh my, it's not like Survivor where they're they're seeing their family again for the first time in thirty days. Right. Uh, yeah, what a great day. That's I mean, gonna be fun. you could say though, you could argue that those three games are all better than any of yesterday's uh, afternoon games, except for morning or afternoon games, except for uh, San Diego, Chicago. Well, they're better than any of the afternoon games we're about to see oh, on Sunday. All and right. That's uh, Houston at Jacksonville starts it off. Uh, man, I don't know why I still believe in this Jags team because Blaine Gabbert's just not good at football. It doesn't seem like. Yeah. Is he good at football? No, no. You know, electric football. I hear it's good at. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if he's good. I know there's not a lot of Jags fans out there, but the Andy Dalton versus Blaine Gabbard thing has to hurt at this point. Oh, yeah. It's just like a total talent misevaluation. Uh, hey, Leinert, I don't think they could be favored by more than four, so I'm saying Houston by four. All right. I, I went five. I you know I thought about Leinert. Like, they still run the ball, and they play great defense, Houston, but it's, it's three and a half. You're going to get this. You're killing me now, four to one. Yeah, I think that's a fair line, because you could, you could make the case the Jags D is good enough that They'll just go eight in a box, and line it will have to make some plays. They didn't play last week, though. I thought maybe they could. Uh, I, I guess. I guess a reader sure. made an interesting point. I didn't run this in the in my column last week, but uh, Leinert had a chance to be Seattle's starting quarterback. Oh right, yeah, with uh, Pete Carroll, yeah. And instead, he chose to re-sign with Houston to be Matt Schaub's backup. Mm-hmm. That's a little weird. Who wow. does that? You think he had a hit put on on Matt Schaub? No, I think I think it's weird that he didn't want to be a starting quarterback. Like he was kind of happy living in Houston yeah. and being a backup. That doesn't show me a ton of ambition. Maybe maybe there's something in the story I'm missing, but if you have a chance to be a starting quarterback, you, you it shouldn't matter what city you're in and what team you're playing for, like you jump at that. But he's got a real pretty face. He wants to protect it. Or maybe he just doesn't like getting coached by Pete Carroll. I don't know. I, I, that I bet could that be goes part a of long it. way. Like, do you think maybe um <laughs> do you think maybe uh being a backup QB is really like one of the great jobs anybody can have. Absolutely. You get you still get all the same Mugambo that you would have gotten as a starting QB. And basically you just you go to practice, you throw a couple outs and a couple ins, you kind of nod at everything the starter says, you have to know the playbook, and then you just you have a really good seat for games. And plus his name is Matt, and when he goes to parties and people are like, hey, this is Matt, he plays for Houston, and half the people hey, aren't paying attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're the starter. Congrats, you're, buddy. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to correct them. So. Yeah, good point. It works out. Carolina at Indy. <laughs> Shh. If you watch any of the college games, I know you did. It, uh, it all of a sudden, not as imperative for the Colts to lose every game now that they see they could have a choice between three quarterbacks who might be just as good as the one that they've been targeting. All right, I have a comment on that, but first I'm going to guess the line. Go ahead. Normally I would say Carolina by three, but I think there's going to be a half-point bump because Vegas is just feeling like the Colts are tanking. Uh, so I'm going to say Carolina three and a half. Uh, you're destroying me. I said five. Team is tanking, so why is it why is it less than five? It's four. Oh, so you were closer there. Well, Carolina, I don't know if you knew this, but Carolina's defense is one of the worst defenses <laughs> I think we've ever seen in professional football. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but they had a uh, what it was at least a double digits lead, and then the Lions just scored every time they had the ball. Cam Newton needs to run around literally to kill clock. He needs to run maybe even backwards in the, <laughs> right. in the backfield just to shorten the game a little bit. That's a good point. Uh, 
What's your comment? Well, you, this quarterback thing. Well, I have one more comment. Indy could now win a game and still not be in luck danger, right? Yeah, sure. Everybody has two, at least two wins. Do I have that correct? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So remember. they could. They this. You don't want to go on sixteen. Yeah, but I thought that last week too against who they play the Jaguars. Or? Yeah. Uh, I watched the entire USC game mm-hmm. from start to finish with Robert Mays, aka the Baby Bear, and. Uh, and we were talking as early as the second quarter about how this would be the week that all the Luck versus Barkley and all the people on the Talking Head shows are. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. I wouldn't rather have Matt Barkley. Right. Like a lot of that. That's going to start this week. And what pisses me off as a Pats fan, I tweeted this yesterday, is that we could have a scenario here where the Colts get Luck, and then. Barkley falls. Well, maybe he won't fall now that the Dolphins are three and seven. But mm-hmm. I just don't want both of those guys in the AFC because Barkley is really good. Right. He's going to be. I mean, he's better than Sam Bradford, right? Would you rather him or Sam Bradford? He's solid. The USC always has giant receivers who. Well, that's who the thing. Come to the ball, so it's, it's it's very hard to tell. But I, all I know is one thing: they were talking about luck can get you can get three first rounders for luck. I, I don't. I think those days are gone. Yeah, I think right? those days are gone. Yeah. I think it's more realistic that they trade Manning. Peter King had a thing in his column today about Manning has some like $25 million bonus or something that they would have to pay before they traded him, but they could work something out with his agent where if they were trading him, the other the new team would pay the bonus or whatever. I just can't. It, I don't see it. Unless like a Daniel Snyder swoops in and, and re, re, uh, configures everything in that deal. First of all, how dare you say you can't see it when Daniel Snyder is in the National Football League? I know. When he's more than willing to go after anybody who's washed up or on the downside. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I guess it comes down to a loyalty thing. I I just think it would be crazy if you're the Colts to keep luck and not play him. And they're going to, if you want to talk yourself into the to, uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, Rodgers is on the record. It's like, oh, sitting was really good for me and all that stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, well. You know, people weren't really sure that you were good when you were sitting. Like, sure. this guy we know is good. And also, so Mays was saying that the USC receivers in their line, like their left tackle would be like the second or third pick in the draft. Yeah. And that uh, their supporting cast is, cast is so much better than Lux that it's not fair. Like, if you put Luck on USC, the same stuff would be happening. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, Luck had three all, uh, I was looking at it, he had three All-American linemen last year, or, last year, or three uh, all-conference linemen. So, so you don't buy that theory. He has two good tight ends, real good tight ends he throws to. His receivers are, are uh, inferior to USC's. USC's true freshman is my favorite point in college football other than their fat kicker. Yeah. The fat kicker is the greatest, and we might have to get Jacoby. We might have to get him on a podcast at some point. I love the fat kicker. Are you going to call him the fat kicker when he comes on? Well, I think <laughs> you got to own it at that point. You got to wear the shirt that's like a tiny bit too tight for you, so like your your little uh, your fat handles hanging down the bottom. But I like the fat kicker. I could right. ask him right now. He's around the corner. He's waiting in line at Pink. So he's been in line since ten thirty in the morning. Um, All right, let's Cleveland keep going. at Cincinnati. Cleveland at Cincinnati, man, uh, the Bengals just are good. They're a good team. They are. Nothing phases them. Nothing. Really, they they just hang. Again. Yeah, they just make do with what they have. It's it reminds me of old school Belichick. Mm-hmm. Uh, this line will be at least seven, and I'm going to say Bengals by eight and a half. All right. Uh, why did I go so high in all these? I, I said nine because I just don't think Cleveland competes with this team, and it's seven and a half. Hmm. So there you go, Cincy Dallas, two team teaser. The Browns actually played half decent in that Jags game. They, oh God, I was thinking you didn't watch that game with Corolla, did you? No, no, he wasn't there. Because that was the all time Corolla. Corolla's mission in life now is for the uprights to be higher. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we've all heard the same rant. I, you and I have probably heard it a combined twenty five <laughs> times. Uh, his podcast listeners, because he just he can't remember what he's talked about, has probably heard it fifty times. Right, but. It, it, I got to say, I, there's really no counter. Like, why aren't they higher? Well, I, the what only thing I'll say of? is, and he works, he, you know, he's a contractor on the side. And oh, yeah. I, I, I'm sure there's some kind of uh, some kind of issue with <laughs> extending the, the uprights to the sky. 
<laughs> right. yeah, Corolla wants them to be built like how like we built the Empire State Building back in the <laughs> mid 70s or yeah. whatever they built it or the World Trade Center yeah, originally. It just becomes a target. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. You have obstructed seats, you know, a thousand obstructed seats off the flash prices. But it does seem weird that in this day and age in 2011, we can't at least like beam lights up and have the football cross through the lights and then figure out with some computer program if it would have ricocheted in or out or what would have happened. Yeah, there should be something. I think like what they do with the tennis if the ball's out or in. Or they, yeah, they we have that. We have in football, we can watch a game with the first down line, the fake first down line. Right. Feels like at the very least, TV networks should have technology that shoots the light through the uprights and then the ball has a tiny chip in it and we see if it was really a field goal. But what would you do, though? Because so many balls hit the post and some hit the post and, and fall in and some hit the post and fall out. It depends, like, what part of the ball hits it or, you know, what angle or what speed. Would they be able to figure that out? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, now it's got too complicated. <laughs> Maybe the computer program would figure out by the miles per hour and yeah. where across the beam of light, whether it would have gone in or out. Yeah. It would be awesome. Plus, we'd have people arguing about the technology. I, I'm all for it. I like it, too. Yeah. I, I say we uh, we make the pylons 80 feet high, too. Somebody said that the other thing we could do is just make the the uprights meet at the top. Just have a bar at the top that goes across. And oh, if you, wow. If you don't kick the kickoff within the square, it's no good. I thought that was pretty interesting. Wow. Now you have to aim it. Yeah. Yeah. They should turn the goalpost upside down completely and see just whatever it will be will be. I do. It, it does seem a little dubious that the uprights can't be higher. Yeah. Like, what's going to happen? Like, they're going to tip over? I guess I know they did it for college because people were carrying the uprights down, but people were savages in the mid-70s. Nobody, no pro football team, no pro football fan base is going to carry the uprights, like, you know, across the field. That doesn't happen anymore. Right. Or just put barbed wire on it. Yeah. Bubble. People want to leave and the game ends. They want to get beat the parking lot rush. Anyway. By the way, real quick with that, uh, Cincinnati, back to Cincinnati average, like, my favorite moment of the week was Pac-Man Jones pulling Torrey Smith down by his hair. Oh, my God. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Like, and Pac-Man said after, he said he closed his eyes and pretended he was in a strip club. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, I had it there. Like, <laughs> like, oh, was that a horse collar? Like, no, he pulled it out of his hair. It's like, how could that be legal? Like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It should be legal. Yeah, it's weird because it's the he was asking for it defense. Like, hey, he grew his hair that way. Right. Yeah, it's part of the, part of the field. All yeah. right. All right, Minnesota at Atlanta. No Adrian Peterson. Oh, man. Toby Gerhardt. Yeah. This is what you get for drafting Toby Gerhardt too high. Mm. Minnesota at Atlanta? At Atlanta, yeah. God, Atlanta just keeps getting... They make me mad. I Atlanta. know. It just seems like they're somehow going to finish like 12-4, and four and we're all going to look at each other and go, what just happened? Uh, it doesn't seem like they win games they're not supposed to. So how could they finish 12? But, uh, but I know what you're saying. It's they never impressive with them. It, well, it's never. You never watch an Atlanta game and go, "Whoa, that team's humming." Yeah. That team. Oh, watch out for that team. Nobody's made those words ever. Right. Uh, I'm gonna say Atlanta by nine and a half. All right, that's what I said too, and it's eight and a half. Mm. So uh, we split that. Mm. You were up seven to two, including the tie. Can I just tell you that I lost? Uh, a fifty dollar parlay at twenty two to one odds on the Broncos money line, the Jaguars, the Dolphins, and the Bears all to beat the spread because Jack Del Rio couldn't figure out a way to score from <laughs> first to go from the two. Would have been one of my great bets ever. Let off with Tebow. He cost you a thousand dollars. Jack Del Rio, yeah, cost wow. like uh, eleven hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's rough. What was the halftime? I mean, there's no way to get out of that, right? Because those other. Games I thought were... the Jags were going to win. I didn't want to hedge it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway. Dumped. Cleveland has four wins. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Buffalo at the Jets. That is ridiculous that they have four wins. <laughs> yeah. As many wins as the Eagles. Great times for the Jets here. They already know they can beat this team. They need a win. And I'm sure we haven't heard the last of them either. Uh, I'm going to say Vegas is now giving up on the Bills. And Jets by eight and a half. You were right. I thought that Vegas had given up on the Jets. And uh, it was the other way around. It's eight. I said five and a half. I was dumb of me. Mm. I was dumb of me. So you're killing. It's over with the Bills. Oh, it's got to be, right? Just, just It was over two weeks ago. And now they're getting guys hurt and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But 
Well, but what about you? So you're you sold on the Jets again? No, not at all. I, in fact, uh, I think it's hard to kick the crap out of a team twice. That's right. They did lose them a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The Sanchez thing is going to be interesting because I do think the Jets fans have had enough of them. And if if anything goes wrong in that game, they'll 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 start yelling at him. Well, I'll say this. I mean, he relies on that little middle screen to either Tomlinson or Green yeah. more than we we know because both those guys were out, and then he just had to pray that Joe McKnight did something, and he did. The one interesting thing that I would watch out for with the Jets is, uh, man, I I really thought a couple of their guys quit on that last drive. Yeah, like, Revis got bowled over. The the two guys in the end zone on the on the winning touchdown by the son of God Tim Tebow. Yeah, I don't know what they were doing. They've gotten rightfully skewered over the last few days, but wait, the, the replays are just damning. Like almost like you kicked those guys off the team for yeah. how little they cared. Terrible missed tackles. Or really awful. Trying. Like just watching it, like it was like they were watching it on television. They were just blinded by Tebow. Yep. But uh, there is a chance this team might be quitting a little bit. Well, my favorite thing about them is my newest pet peeve. And everyone says it. Like someone hears it, someone else say it, and then it's just like like an epidemic. Like yeah. the Jets have no identity. <laughs> Why does a football team have to have an identity? Like, yeah. shouldn't you be good at everything? <laughs> you oh should. no, they run first and they play good defense. Like no, they do. Every, what, why? Who cares if they have no identity? <laughs> Lombardi came over and watched the games with us yesterday, yeah. and uh, I think he said this in the podcast too. Like that, the Jets are in a really weird place with Sanchez because they're going to have to pay him like a year and a half from now. Oh. And, you know, what do you do? He was your fifth pick. Can you win a title with him? I don't know. Like, do you make a run for somebody else? Like, what do you do? Well, they don't really even have to pay him now because he no. has no identity. And how do you write a check out to someone with no identity? <laughs> he wrote to John Doe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Tampa Bay of Tennessee. Ooh. Raheem Morris suddenly in the chat. We never did those. Uh, you should do that for your gambling blog on Thursday, the coach to get fired odds, because we still haven't had a coach fired. Raheem oh, Morris is climbing up the charts. Those are really I had I loved Sperano at that in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. They, well, then we thought we thought it was going to be Del Rio. That's right. Um, so maybe everyone lasts this year. There's not much time left. There's only a month left. I don't think North Turner has a lot of losses left. Mm. In fact, uh, we'll get to that game, but I, th- I think this could be it for him if they lose this week. Somebody's going to lose. What was the game? I'm sorry. Tampa Bay at Tennessee, and I guess they're saying Hasselbeck will start. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that helps. I'm going to say Tennessee by four. Oh, wow. I actually won one. I got this one exactly. It's only three. <laughs> really? No respect for this Tennessee team. <laughs> Who? Why would you respect the Tampa team? Yeah. Maybe right. That's pretty weird. I don't I mean, get if that Jake one. Locker starts next year... Yeah. And then, I mean, there could be like eight or nine starting quarterbacks who are either in their first or second year next year, like like 30% of the teams. Well, and Barkley, potentially Barkley and Luck, and who's the other quarterback? The Griffin people, the third. The Griffin the third. Yeah. So you might have three. Yeah, three that's plus interesting. another six, five or six here. Yeah. It's bad news for Colt McCoy. Oh, yeah, he could be out. Yeah. Um, all right, Arizona at St. Louis. Let's Ugh. please not spend a lot of time on this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll rush through this. I'm gonna say Rams by uh two and a half. That's what I said, and it's three. All right. So we split that. Now uh Chicago at Oakland, here are the late afternoon games. So those games stunk pretty much. Yeah, those are bad. Read through that. Yeah. Chicago at Oakland, man. I mean I would have loved Chicago in this game pre Cutler injury. I'm gonna say So there's a line on this game. They gave yeah, there is a line. I checked right before wow. you called in. I'm going to say Raiders by four and a half. All right. I said four, and it's three and a half, so I get it. That doesn't make sense. Well, I, well, I want to see Caleb play a good game before he's know. getting less than four against a decent team. Devin Hester's heard it's a different story. Yeah. Can I make a complaint? I know I'm about a dozen years late with this observation, but yeah. the oh, by the ways are getting way, 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 way out of hand mm. on the ESPN. And I won't even mention the anchor who said, but I counted six yesterday. It's not even used as a – it's like uh, in Chicago looking at their schedule and they have, oh, by the way, they have Oakland. Like, why is that special? That's not special, oh, by the way. It's not. <laughs> Just let it go. I'm not a fan. All right. I'm not yeah. going to say which anchor or he or she is. Yeah. But here we go. Yeah, I'm not uh, a fan. Washington at Seattle. Ooh, another bad game. He, is it just me or can Rex look competent from time to time? Well, I, I don't know what happened, but we made – we made Jabbar Gaffney and Dante Stallworth look like monsters yesterday. Yeah, I didn't. I have to admit, I didn't know Dante was still in the league. 
<laughs> and, and and probably shouldn't be. He was poised, and he's running. He's running the ball in the end zone. Good. He made good throws. The throw, the touchdown throw to Stallworth was a good throw. Shanahan should. Shanahan kind of ruined this team for this year, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, oh, he, in first place the year, the week before, he he benched Grossman, and then yeah. you know this this learning curve for a month. The offense never revitalized. So I agree. Uh, I don't mind the Seattle team. I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm going to say Seattle by four. Wow, yeah, you got it. I said two and a half. I thought four was high. Yeah, that's the home the home field. All right, yeah. I guess. Isn't Washington in Seattle or vice versa? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denver at uh, San Diego. Oh, my God. Who's not rooting for Tebow in this game? Uh, I mean, find me anybody. I, I think you got uh, me. Right, right here. All right, you. Okay. I, I think you have this all wrong. I, I read your column, and uh, well, why are you rooting for this guy? I love it. Let me just. Oh, look, actually, let me uh, play this call. This message you left me. What? This is yes. You left me another message. It was Thursday night. It, it started off pretty, pretty bleak, but here, here's how it goes. All right. Cousin Sal, sports guy here. <sighs> I'm all out of breath. Just played a game of hoops at the local YMCA. I, I haven't been this winded since the time I broke the push-up record neighbor's cucumber patch, but uh, this basketball whole experience got me really depressed. I don't understand how the league won't take into consideration the passion of the fans. They don't care about our feelings. And what's to become of Tim Thomas's mustache? Ever think of that? I'd break it down like this. If I could play one game of pickup basketball every seven years and not get paid, why can't the players do that forever? Anyway, let me turn the TV on and see if I can catch a Top Chef finale. Oh, what's this? My new man crush, Tim Tebow, is driving the Broncos down the field, but they could take the lead. He avoids a tackle, avoids another tackle. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. That's my boy. I didn't see his statistics, but that must be his fourth touchdown in the game. I bet he has 500 yards passing. (laughs) Oh, what? He refuses to throw a completed forward pass for first three and a half quarters? That's all right. He's still my Tweety Bird, Tender Thigh, Timmy Terrific, Tub of Tic Tacs. And I've never been so in love in all my history of my life. Now I could die in peace for the 16th time. Wait, I was just kidding about dying. Here comes a ferocious grizzly bear. What is going on? He's going to kill me. This bit needs an ending. Help. That was it. Yeah. You got killed by a grizzly bear. <laughs> Rooting for Tim Tebow. <laughs> What a shame. Uh, I don't think you went further, far, far enough with the phone call. <laughs> I was way more excited than that. You really I would have beaten were. up the grizzly bear. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, just when you, watch, when you watch somebody break the will of the other team like Tim Tebow does, you just you fall in love. What can I say? All right, maybe because it was the Jets. Maybe. But, but That's what I really Let loved. me ask you this. Why not put Kyle Orton in the first three quarters? I, I, I've i received that question a few times, and I don't really have an answer. Just do it. Just do it already. Or, uh, I mean, uh, you you should hate this. Like, this is not like this is not football. This is like when Lithuania beats the uh, Olympic basketball team, the U.S. team. Is that a great thing? It's a, no, it's not the same game. It's not real. And you know one team's better than the other. You know. I, I can't take it anymore. I love it, and I love that it makes people so upset. I don't think sports always has to make sense. All right. There you go. You're rooting for the wrong side here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the line? Denver at San Diego. Denver at San Diego. Uh, <laughs> man, I think I, it's weird, but it, it, it makes sense for them to jack the line toward Denver because so many people are enjoying this whole Tebow thing. I'm going to say San Diego by four. All right. I get a, a little break here. I said seven, and it's six and a half. Yeah, well, I was wrong about them jacking the line toward Denver. Well, this is uh, this is their season, San Diego, right? I mean, they're two games out. They stink. How about this? They're not good. Yeah. They're not a good football team. They're not good. They have no good players. Name me two good Chargers on defense. Well, and Denver stands out. Uh, they, they uh, and they they specialize in pick sixes. Maybe Rivers should just hand off the first three quarters. Maybe that that should be it. Just a hand. I think fest. W- when we talk about. Allow me to be, be the 90th person to talk, to make the Von Miller. We should talk about Von Miller when we talk about Tebow. But um, like, fl- forget about the Tebow part. Just think about Denver's defense versus what we've seen from the San Diego offense. Yeah. And the fact that they have Champ Bailey, they can put him on Vincent Jackson. I think it's going to be tough for uh, the Chargers to protect Rivers and move the ball. It so is. So I like this as an upset pick. And I'll be the millionth person to say he misses Darren Sproles. 
I mean, that's it. He needed that relief. I'll tell you what. He misses Darren Sproles. <laughs> he misses having that little outback. Okay. Anyway. Uh, all right. No line here. New England at Philly. I think Ooh. you'd be favored by. Uh, boy, I, I think you'd be favored by five here. But, yeah, I would have said three and a half. But, really? Yeah. That low with if Vince Young quarterback. Oh, Vic's not coming back? I don't know. All right. Just put a Well, jack- Vic's young, yeah. It should be like five or six. And then Sunday night, Pittsburgh or Kansas City. Oh, man. That's a nice one for the Steelers. Poor Kansas City. I'm going to say uh, Steelers by 11 and a half. Uh, wow, you just get it. I said eight. I went low, and it's it's ten. All right, I but, did I mean, that. I read that the Steelers, I mean, they're coming off a bye, so they watched two weeks film of uh, Tyler Palco. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> no, it's, it's mostly like his high school graduation video and his communion. But I just found out this weekend because I asked, I mentioned that I didn't know who Tyler Palco was, and apparently he's the guy who beat out Joe Flacco in college. Yeah. Yeah, my, so my that's who he is. Yeah. Right. Coach Juan's not favorite. Yeah. All right, Monday, Giants at uh, Saints. Great game, hopefully. And that's a good one. This Giants team, they've had like seven seasons already. Mm-hmm. And now I think people are out on the Giants again, which is when they always thrive. Right. I'm going to say Saints by five and a half. All right, you got it. I went too low on this one. It's six and a half. Ooh. I don't know. If people I... really are out on the Giants. I don't know. You know what? They need to start uh, showing the coin toss on the telecast. I mean, 11 in a row for the Saints. That's uh, as remarkable as anything we're going to see in a game. Yeah, I, I emailed you that stat, yeah. and I got the wow back with like seven exclamation points from you. So I, I knew I knew you really enjoyed it. I Sometimes really you just get the straight wow with no exclamation points, but <laughs> that one got a lot of them. Uh, the Browns have nine, apparently. The Browns have lost nine, I think, coin hey, tosses in a row. It really is something that that uh, Vegas should take keep better track of. Yeah, they should get us. We will win them a coin toss. You know what you got me fascinated on are the who scored the who's going to score the most points this week. Bet. I know. I love the Bears yesterday, but I didn't I didn't bet it, and it ended up being the Lions, right? Forty five. It was the Lions, but uh, you know the 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 Panthers at twenty four at half. You're like, oh, it's going to be the Panthers. This is crazy. That could be thirty to one. Probably. That's a fun bet. I think that's the most fun bet of the weekend. I'm just going to start doing it every weekend. You figure you win so you win once, you win your money back. Like the rule should be, you have to bet. Yeah, has to be at least ten to one or higher or something. You well, just roll the dice. I think we figured it out. We figured it out. We haven't made a dime off it, but the way to target one game, right? Preferably on turf. Right. So you Well, throw- you want to target one game, and you want to target the team that's the underdog because they have the much better odds, right? Yeah. So. Well, Detroit over Green Bay might not be too bad. Oh, for this week? Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Oh, that is a good one. I'm looking at it, too. Uh, you have to sit through the whole weekend and try to hope it doesn't. Uh, lose. The Giants could be interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's anyway. go, Giants. They'll do throw some, that ball. Do some plugs other than the amount of food you're going to eat for Jimmy Thanksgiving. Kim, oh, forget it. Jimmy Kimmel Live, uh, Artie Lang and Nick DiPaolo on tonight. Uh, wow. Lady Antebellum. Tomorrow, the Dancing with the Stars winner. Um, who else? Oh, Nickelback, one of your all-time favorites will be on. And uh, Grantland Wednesday, I'll have a new gambling blog on the triangle. Is it in the triangle or on the triangle? Uh, either, however you want to say All right. And tonight, my prop... Winner tonight, will Rob Gronkowski score a touchdown? No, he will not. Oh! 115, jump on it. <laughs> Stunning! Yes, it's all Hernandez tonight. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you think they go right to Hernandez? Yep, yep, they're going to switch it up. Good right. feeling. Cousin Sal, as always, a pleasure. Thank you. All right, Bill, thanks. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Jacoby, come in here. We're going to fill some time with Dave Jacoby right now. Dave Jacoby now in the studio. What's happening? Uh, not much. There's no one monitoring whether this is actually recording. So okay, good. It may not happen, but I've yeah. got news for you, Bill. Yeah. I know you've been working very hard this morning. You probably missed it. Yeah. That um, the young lady who was the creator of the Jersey Shore has a new show out. Oh, my Lord. And what's it called? Um, I believe it's called Mama Drama. Mama Drama. Okay, just based on that alone, why don't you just tell me what you think it is? All right, this is good. I like this. Mama Drama. I'm going to say it's about mothers and daughters who don't get along and they're both single and they're all in a house together. 
Did you see the article? No, I swear Pretty to much God. Exactly. I'm not 100 percent sure it's called Mama Drama. I didn't. I, I, I like. Briefly I got it. Read the blog post, but that's a pretty much 100 percent it. Mothers and daughters in the same house. Yeah, but it's even better than that. It's a bunch of. It's like a, a lot of groups of mothers and daughters in the same house. But it's that like weird mother and daughter relationship where they're like best friends and they want to like go out together and like yeah, gossip yeah. about guys and stuff. Like yeah. they've like gone out and found like five of these sort of pairs of weird mother daughters, put them in a house and see what happens. And it just seems like a recipe for the perfect disaster. So the real world, the 19 year old designated driver and her mom Would conceivably be, could have been on that thing. I think not crazy enough. Do you think there's a rule like you can't be more there can't be more of a 19 year age difference between you and your daughter? It's better. It's better if it's 30 years and the mom is like 52 and still thinks that she can like hang and wear oh, like the same super stuff. Super cougar mom. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think it's better if there's a larger gap because then the delusion the delusion factor goes up. Well, all right, here's my quick cuz you blindsided me with this obviously. So here are my quick impressions. One. Okay. My wife will watch the show every week. Doesn't matter. Two, Seven, my wife two. will eventually want to be on the show with we'll my daughter. Yeah. With Zoe, yeah. 52 year old <laughs> wife <laughs> and my daughter arguing about pants. Uh, three, I like the, I like having, if this is how they're going to do it, I like having like the five pairs. Cause it's really like you can fight with your mom because daughters and mothers are going to fight anyway. But but now also fighting with everyone else yeah, in the house. Yeah, and there's also the built-in, like, I have to have your back. Like, don't talk about my daughter like that. Don't talk about my mother like that. Yeah. I mean, that that's going to happen probably at least seven times an episode. Yeah. And, like, obviously... It'd be a good drinking game. Yeah. This was, a like, a Hollywood Reporter article that I just kind of skimmed through. Like, once you see, like, mama drama, pairs of mothers in a house, you kind of, like, get it. Yeah. But there was one quote from... Um, the lady, I want to say her name is Sally Salsano. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Sally Ann something. Something, yes. Yeah. And shout out to her for making my life so much better yeah. than I already was. Yeah, me too. And um, I, there was one, she's like, I felt like the, sa- the first season of Jersey Shore where I just couldn't leave the control room because at any second anything could happen. Oh, yeah. Now, granted, that's exactly what you want her to say. And any show she ever comes out with, she's going to say that. But I'd be lying if I didn't get like 10% goosebumps when I read that. You know, it does bother me that the reality, when they're creating these, that they don't come to us. I think you know it's how, only like, a matter of time. You know how, like, Warren Buffett, people go to, what like, LeBron's forming his company yeah. and Mavericks, yeah. like, let's take Warren Buffett out to lunch. And we won't give him any stock in the company, but we'll just feel him out. We'll get, yeah. maybe he'll give us two things not, that we can do. We're not going to, like, completely revamp yeah. your idea. We're just, just going to add one or two little we'll, punches. Yeah, we'll listen to it, and we'll just turn it yeah. over, and we'll give you, like, two things. Just make us consultants and, and buy us dinner yeah. and Do you know, like, Wilds whatever. is great with that. Wilds is great with anything. Any idea you have, just come with it, and he'll just yeah. be like, oh, he'll, like, he'll make, like, a 2% change that makes right. a 20% difference. So here, here would be my suggestion, other than it sounds like they're on the right path. I think you need to have at least one or two really good looking guys who work in the house. Like uh, a the, the, butler. Yeah. The, the back really club, handsome they butler. They did that in the oh, back they did that club. in the back no, they have, they, it's, it's the worst though. They like hire like some like, you know, a struggling actor to be like the pool guy. Uh, but he's, he's such a bad actor that he can't pull off being a pool guy. I don't even think it has to be an actor. I think it's legitimately somebody who's like there's a bartender and a butler and they're both well, they and they're need, all flirting with them and all that stuff. That's what I need. men to fight over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I also think like, I must imagine that if you take, I think it is 10 women and I, it would only make sense if they were single. It doesn't really work. I mean, some of them, some of them might have like real world boyfriends, Yeah. but you have, they can fight with each other. They always will. It's just like nature will run its course, but it's better when they fight over stuff. Well, that's you know what. what I mean? So maybe you limit it to four hair dryers in the house. Ooh. And that's it. Oh yeah, I'm three sure curling irons. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's only there's definitely only like one and a half. You've been there for a half hour. Yeah, one and a half baths, one yeah. phone, yeah. one one laptop. That's smart. They do do that well. It's sort of like uh, it's like it's like it's like Neanderthals fighting over resources. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, they've they've got that thing down. The only thing well. I don't like is when there's not enough toilets. I thought that's when Jersey Shore really turned for me when Dina was clogging the toilet. <laughs> I was just so so upset with that for so many different reasons. <laughs> I, was, I was already grossed out with Dina, and now I, I just couldn't it took, watch it anymore. Took, it took you that long for Jersey Shore to turn on you? Yeah, it did. It took me that long. <laughs> Dina clogged the toilet when I was out. But, uh, yeah, I like when people fight over stuff. I like when they fight over um, guys. But I think the mother-daughter thing is going to be great, because there's, like, baby-daddy drama. Oh, yeah. And then there's, there's going to be a lot of, like... This is when it's going to get good to me is when... 
one mother starts going in on another mother's daughter. Because right. it's always weird, like, like if a what you dressing like a whore? Yeah, exactly. And then like, what? Oh, you don't call my daughter a whore. Don't call my whore daughter a whore. You know? it's like, <laughs> Only I can call her a whore. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be one of those things. It's gonna go weird really fast, and I'm yeah. excited about it. Well, do we have? See, I don't like when the girls are too young. Like on Basketball Wives, on Kenny Anderson's wife was on that year, yeah. and her daughter was 16, and she went. She was like too young, and I just felt bad for her. Yeah. Like she was like still still savable. Yeah, you, I need, but not like that. She had a very sweet, innocent face. Yeah, she, she was, was like nice. Quiet. She was like, ah, oh, I feel bad. Yeah, this like is Evelyn's terrible. daughter who's going to college. If you don't remember her. Yeah, yeah. Was, like, I felt bad for her too. I didn't. She's like of the age. You know, she's going off to college. She's like kind of adultish, and she kind of had an attitude about the whole thing, and she had a head on her shoulders. Kenny Anderson's daughter just sat there like. She was overwhelmed by the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was, but like the other one didn't mind the cameras. So you don't think sure. having Anton Walker as your former stepfather and Chad Ochocinco as your current stepfather would put you in shock? No, I, think I feel like you'd be any, like you're ready half, for anything at that point. Half shock. The girl should be at least eighteen. Okay, fair. Yeah. Did you have anything on the agenda when you invited me in here? Or would you just no? That was it. I figured it have one thing. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, the other thing. So. Email us if you're a fan of Jacoby's Reality Scorecard, which is excellent, which runs every Friday on Grantland.com. Uh, we are going to tinker with the league for 2012. Yeah. And what it looks like we're going to do is we're going to make an auction format. So we all have a certain amount of money at the start of the year. We bid on the on the characters. And the, the real reason for this is because Frank has ruined our league with the, in the real world. He's <laughs> had 700 points, and Connor just randomly got him. I'm not sure his real name is Frank. It's like I he made the token effort to pretend he was interested in the female roommate for 30 minutes, and then was immediately... Not even 30 minutes. One, 20 one segment. minutes. What can you do? I, it's I, whatever. I, I, Frank, we're on your side. Whatever you say, Frank, I'm, yeah, I'm in on. Yeah. Whatever you just, say, you are, you are. Don't try to pretend to be concerned. who you're not. As far as, far as yeah. I'm concerned, whatever you are, you are. But that's not. But what I'm saying is, is you're you're now biting off a little bit more than you can chew. Because I'm, if we have this this mama drama, which if they don't call it mama drama, they should. Starts on January first, so we have a lot of work to do. Well, we also days. the biggest mistake we made these first six months, and y- you were a buck passer. You blame me for it. Was not having Real Houses of Beverly Hills. Yeah, and, you said not to have it. So well, because the guy just committed suicide, and we made a panic decision. That's and just a pretty the, good decision, if you ask. Well, we could have waited a week, and now it's like, even the producer's like, ah, you screw it. A week is enough morning for No, because we thought it was going to be like, screw up the show, and it really hasn't. Like, he's actually a character in the show, and, and whatever. They've yeah. moved on, and it shouldn't have taken away from uh, from A. We missed some great moments. Kim's phenomenal performance this season. Uh I think MVP. one of the greats of all time. For sure. I mean, like how we yeah, look at like show. Barry Bonds' 2001 yeah. season. Yeah. I've gone which, from which, saying... Which one was more tainted with drugs? <laughs> both. <laughs> I've gone from telling people that I only watch the show because my wife watches it to watching it on my own without <laughs> yes. my wife. I'm like, oh, Kim's on. No! Oh! We were watching football yesterday, and uh, there was a spare TV over in the corner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I lobbied hard to put um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills on it. There's a marathon on yesterday. I wanted it so bad. I, I didn't want everybody else to look down on me. There was a quiet moment in the room, and Bill goes, I think this is my favorite show. <laughs> I was, like, I was what, kidding. What do you mean? What do you mean, Bill? No, I think this is my favorite show. I love Kim. Like when Kim You're comes on the TV. Off it now you meant it. You meant it when you said it. Now Homeland's my favorite show. I that was I was trying to get a rise out of the room. Oh, I fell but, asleep halfway through Homeland last night. Oh no. Yeah. Kim is my favorite character on TV. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. I love Kim. I, I like watching her, not knowing what, what she, what's happening, what she's on. More than Ken, the LPGA golfer? Yes, more than Ken, the LPGA <laughs> golfer with the little dog. I love that guy. He's awesome. I don't know what sex he is anymore. Um, he's sexy, I'll tell you that much. I love Ken. I love... Uh, I, do. I want to spend time with him. Both of us like are attracted to Kyle. Have reason to like take him for lunch or something. He's like, Ken, we want you to write an article for us or call him and then just have a lunch with Ken. I love Kelsey Grammer's ex-wife and how she's yeah. all of a sudden everybody likes her. And we, th- there was a tipping point that they never showed on the show. She went from being the one everybody, everybody hated, hated to... Yeah. Uh, and I love... Uh, Taylor, the Joker, as I call her in the house, because she kind of looks like the Joker, because she's been so skinny and so much surgery. Yeah, I like the new one. It's a good show. Joe, I love uh, the one who's very buxom, Dana. Dana, who's just desperate to be. What do you mean by buxom? She's very wound out. What do you mean? She's very wound out in the uh, in in the chest area. Okay. She uh, she really wants to be in the show. She wants to be in the cast. Yes. 
And, and she thinks kissing up to the cast is going to get her on the show. Nobody has ever tried harder yeah. to be friends with everybody. She baked cookies for the sound man. Yeah. He's asking about what did you kids. say yesterday when people were leaving? She's like, hey, I bought you a Cadillac. Just yeah, take whatever it. Whatever you need. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a ride? There's no she reason to, to give her a ride off. Laughing at every joke. Take my BMW. When they were uh, turning on um, the girl in the crutches, whatever her name is, Brandy. Tamara? Brandy? Yeah, Brandy. Okay. The, Leanne, the one Leanne Rimes broke up her marriage. I don't know. When they were all turning yeah. on that girl during she the card game. Crutches, she found out she was on that show and then she. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. But she found out they turned on her and that Dana wanted so desperately. She just kind of was like Lord of the Flies. She just went with the pack. Uh, of course. Throwing stones at her. Like, yeah. yeah, she's the best. That show is great. It's a great hour every week. I really enjoy it. It is. And I think. And I love. Oh, we didn't even talk about the British girl, the condescending uh, old British lady she, who's, she's, with, who's fantastic. Yeah, she's easily the one I would like to hang with the most. Hang with, like, hang with, hang with? No, actually, just, like, sit down and have a glass of wine with. Yeah. Yes, she really, she, I think she's intelligent. She's married to Ken, the LPGA golfer. She's married to Pe- Ken, the LPGA golfer. I would love to just be, um, do you remember their houseboy they had? Oh, uh, yeah, Cedric. Yeah, Cedric. <laughs> I, I love Cedric. Cedric. If I could swap lives with Cedric for a month, yeah. it would make me so happy. There was always, like, a, maybe I was reading too much into it, but Cedric seemed like they just kind of brought Cedric in to mix things up in bed. Ooh, whoa. Cedric was just a three-way, and oh. any, it could go anyway. Oh, Cedric's oh, yeah. in the bed. Uh-oh. The LPGA yeah, everybody's, everybody's in play. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I never thought Probably not true, but it was just, oh, definitely they were so true. attached to him. Definitely true, yeah. I hope it's true. I want it to be true. I want it to be true, too, and yeah. I want it to be on film, and I want to download it. And we were so hurt by what Cedric did, <laughs> what Cedric said about us. <laughs> This is a man who took into our house for 10 years. I love that she invites the girls over for tea. And it's like catered. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like when you guys came over yesterday. It's a staff as big as the guest. Yeah. Yeah. You guys came over yesterday. My son and I went to the grocery store. We bought cold cuts. Yes. She's like, can you come over for tea? There's seven people scurrying around, like making muffins from scratch. Like, how much can you waste money? Yeah. I also love when they have these events where they get awards. Like these are whole shows. It's oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. There's always- so I'm getting an award for um, the website I'm doing. It's for Young Charitable Business of America, and it's like, what? What? Yeah. And I don't know. People if go they to come this together in time because Camille Grammer won an award too. For what? What could you possibly? She won an award. award she had to give a speech, and she's like, I was so nervous giving my speech and it was like I was nervous watching it because I don't know why you would want to award yeah, she was also the <laughs> for being a former softcore porn star who has got married I've oh, yeah. seen ever she could not be worth it was like it was, she was speaking in a foreign language it was great it was out of control did you I don't I will defend the show and, and anybody who likes making fun of TV as they're watching it and who doesn't watch the show I don't know what to tell you yeah it's 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 the number one show to make fun of as you're watching that's the thing it really toes the line what's I really enjoy hating things along with my lady. Yeah. And I really enjoy loving things as I watch them with her as well. And like we can do both at the same time with this show. And the best part is the real reason the British woman hates Taylor is because I don't think she thinks Taylor has a lot of money. And her attitude is like... They're faking it. They they rent their house. They don't own it. Like she's, it's so like catty. It's so like awesome. It. It's like, like it. so like wealthy, bitchy. They're, it's just great. Taylor's great. And Taylor's great. They're, they're all they're, they're all fantastic. It's watched, the best uh, cast I've ever I watched, had in that uh, show. Housewives Atlanta for the first time this season. How'd that go? Um, no, it doesn't have the same. What was the ethnic mix of that uh, show? It it trends it trends browner than the uh, Beverly Hills does. Mm. Because like, I think that's there's a uh, there's a falcon in it. Oh. Kim Zolzniak, this um absolutely lunatic young lady lives in Atlanta that wears wigs. Um, oh, an Atlanta falcon. Set. I thought you meant the bir- an actual falcon, yeah, no, like a bird. No, no. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Takes their hair pieces there's away. An Atlanta falcon named Ooh Cody, a uh, Corey Cody. So you know, I believe you. Yeah, he's in it. Some sort of hybrid basketball wives L.A. Yeah, I'm not saying you. <laughs> I'm not saying you put Jackie Christie on the show. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. That would be a little, I think that would be like throwing a chainsaw on a pool. <laughs> Maybe Kim Shartes. That one, I didn't watch that show this season, but I did have it on the other night, and I saw the first like 10, 12 minutes of the season finale, uh-huh. and they had all turned on, on Doug Christie's oh, wife. Yeah. I read this in your column too, but I didn't yeah. really, I didn't, to watch it, 
just see it, like how they all turned on her. And then she had the one girl left who didn't go on the vacation, and then she tried to spin it her way. Oh, no. She, here's the thing is is the one girl left was Kimsha Artest, who's, who's, uh, or Kimsha World Peace, maybe. I don't know. Who's Ron Artest. Sure partner life partner yeah and she after like the second episode probably like the second day of taping was just like you know what screw this show i'm not on the show this is ridiculous i've got other things to do and then and then everybody turned on jackie so jackie in turn had no one to go to and was like oh i'll just call kim show who's been out of the loop for two months mm. i will say this it makes a lot more sense to me that the 2002 kings did not win the nba title after watching uh the little I've seen of Jackie. Jackie. You can't have her as a, as a, as a wife in your locker room. Like, I don't know. That's going to destroy because your team. She's literally in the locker room. Yeah. And she's traveling with the team. She's a maniac. Behind the bus. Yeah. She, just, just a, a couple of highlights before we go from cra- uh, Crazy Jackie Christie this season. She um, put Drea on the other side of the hotel from her and Doug's room. Intentionally. Just in a different wing of the hotel. Why? No reason. Oh, by the way, it was a girl's vacation, and she brought, she insisted that her husband go along with her on said girl's vacation, because she doesn't go anywhere without her husband. Oh, and if that's not enough, she married him for the 16th time, because they have an annual I saw they got the annual marriage. Annual marriage. Yeah. And they have, she has an annual um, bachelorette party as well. Yeah, that was a little weird, too. It's always, it's all a little weird. My wife likes the earrings. Oh, my wife will not be quiet about these earrings either. My wife dressed yeah. up as a basketball wife for Halloween. That's not you true. You didn't see that. Oh, it's totally true. That's not true. She totally 100% did. I don't believe you. I swear to God. And, and this is so, uh, and we haven't spoken about this. I forgot to tell you. Uh, that's weird. She wore a black wig and she wore these giant awful earrings and then she had like a baby mama t-shirt and well, that works. whole bit thing. Um, yeah. here's, here's what my wife said during the last episode. What is this? A contest to see who has the biggest earrings? Yeah. They all just wear giant, giant earrings. earrings. And at giant. one point, like, Kimsha not only had a huge hoop at the bottom of her ear, yeah. she had, like, the top of the ear huge hoop. So she had double huge hoops. They're in on. now. Yeah. They're I, setting the I trend. I don't know what's in. I guess they are. Uh, There's a lot going to be a lot of revamps for the, the reality television league. So listen, if you want to um, help us out with this auction thing, what do you know? Editors at Grantland.com? Yeah. Uh, that's what it's called. Yeah, you'll find it on the site. But yeah. We need help. Send us emails if you have any ideas for the auction format, because we do want to make it so that instead of just random draft order determining the season, there should be a little more skill, I think. Oh, I see what's happening here, Yeah, Bill. I feel like I had the oh, best year. I see what's happening here, I feel like here, I had the Bill. best year out of anybody. Oh, you want to skew it so you can win the league. I'm huh? upset that Connor's winning. Over there, huh? upset. Well, the real problem was oh, the designated the driver. Boss man now. No, the designated oh. driver killed me. <laughs> God, man, how about the you draft better and then you win? Well, I should have drafted. Well, I don't know who else I could have drafted if if not the the designated driver was the clear number two pick. Yeah. The the what? No, here's in the, the real world is, draft. No, here's what happened is they put her in the promos with her top off, jumping into a pool. And she talked about how she loved getting talks naked. About how she loves to get naked. She's been naked once. On her. She's been naked once. Yep, yeah, she has not. Well, she was with uh, her little boyfriend there underneath the covers. You've talked about in your column that this was the most loathsome real world cast ever. I think loathsome is strong. This is the least entertaining. I'd say most loathsome. Sure. I mean, it sounds better. You can't have this show without having a good guy. A guy that I want would, would want to like hang out with for 12 hours. You need... There's a lot of things you need. And I think that one of the big problems was is their wild card girl was a dude. Like, you need a crazy hot girl every season that's going to fight and be weird and the other girl's going to be scared of but to, like be nice to in their face and talk about behind her back mm. you need uh, like uh, like an, an alpha male you know what we should do as a, as a column we should try to create the perfect uh real world cast using old cast members like what the mm. perfect chemistry of the cast would be because i do think they try to fit we'll go here we'll go here we'll go here we'll go here yeah I and then uh that wouldn't we do it long. that way. That's a good idea. Yeah, that wouldn't take long at all. And try to figure out, like, maybe we should do it two different ways. The Hall of Fame, the best eight characters ever. And then we do the, the if you were going to create the perfect show. Well, the perfect show would be more fun because we could write fake, fake dialogue. Like, I would argue that uh, you can't have more than one Adam or Frank. Adam from Real World Second Vegas. Oh, or that yeah. Frank dude. You can't have the, one, the lunatic person. You can't have two. No, you can have. You need to have one. It's 
it's I just I think you you can have more than one lunatic. I just think you need different brands of lunacy. Well, like Wes from Real World Austin, wherever that show was, or like Jen with two ends from Real World Denver. Yeah. Those are two lunatics that they're not lunatic lunatics, but they're lunatics. Yes. By the way, they they might both be on my cast. <laughs> Wes and Jen with two ends. Jen with two ends is my first pick. <laughs> Jen with two ends. At some point, we have to get you and Jen with two oh, ends in the same room at the same time. Here's what we should that. do. We should do a snake fashion draft. Um, we each pick eight roommates. One of us gets first pick, then the other one gets second, third, then you get fourth, and so on. And we see who comes up with the better cast. Oh, I'll dominate. I will crush you. There's no chance. I'm going to crush you. Let's go back to the office and do this right now. All right, I'm out of here. BS Report, gone. So I get the sound off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. You laughed, you cried, you cranked up the volume to your neighbors, call the cops, and now it's all over. But Bill will be back another day with another dose of the good stuff. Until then, get some more good stuff at Subway restaurants, like the Mega Meaty Big Philly Cheesesteak, or try one of the other tender, juicy Subway steak melts, like the mouth-watering steak and cheese, or the melt-alicious steak, bacon, egg, and cheese for breakfast. So head to Subway today and treat your taste buds to some fresh, toasted flavor. Subway, eat fresh.